This is Julius from The Human Project. I've had the pleasure to have Dr. Raunelina Lukanen Kilde by me for a few days and it will be a few more days since the volcano on Iceland is blocking all the planes from here. So actually we are enjoying and we have just realized that everything is about, you can say, the now. Uh, all the power is in the now and when we stay centered in the now and realign to what we truly are, we are all love, we are all powerful consciousness you can say we all have so much energy many things can happen so please share this video with all you know around the world please help the human project since we are all part of the human project let's do it let's be one force since we are all literally one when we come down to it so thank you for sharing and thank you for being who you are thank you very much good morning Dr. Rowney good morning Good morning. It's a brand new day. It's a new beginning, we can say. It's, how we say, new energy is coming in. A lot of changes in the world going on. A lot of chaos. But also a lot of good things. And what we really need today is we need more love. I know we can talk about this a lot, but love and love and love. But love is really the key. I've just been, before we are going to have this little talk, I've been to a treatment with these singing bowls and she could hear how my shot, uh, heart chakra opened a lot with these uh, vibrations you can say and what we really need today is we need to embrace each other we need to come together we need to work as one yeah we need love Rami. the whole world needs love but at the moment i think we are in a situation like a small baby who's getting the first tooth you know, the tooth has to come out, but it hurts. And when it comes out, it hurts, but then it's a beautiful tooth. And we are right there with the tooth hurting, with the ashes from Iceland, with the, at the same time, uh, an earthquake in China. I don't think these are coincidences. Of course, they are natural catastrophes, quote, quote. But we have to remember men, that means mankind, has weapons that can make earthquakes that can make volcanoes to erupt, that can cause tsunamis, and that is the pain right now for the tooth coming out. Let's say we're breaking the ice, let's say it's, it's, it seems like we're just in a dark period now, we just need, like you say, to get through it, and everything moves so fast now, but also, you know, you feel a lot of love from people, you feel, feel a lot of good uh, things coming, people are opening more, they are more ready, they are waking up fast, it seems like love is really the universal uh, means so of course it is but i think there's a lot of pain too but some people learn through the pain it's very strange that when we have wars and catastrophes so all of a sudden people who didn't care about each other's they start being friendly they start supporting their neighbors they 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 change totally so somehow it seems that the pain is part of the human life and it is going to be a change for the better through the pain through the catastrophes because otherwise it doesn't make any sense just to have a man-made catastrophe which can kill thousands but when it changes the whole idea of what it is to be a human being on this planet what is actually our goal why are we here what is the individual mission of every human being and what is the collective mission of the whole mankind and most people don't think about that they have to be stopped and the stop happens often through catastrophes or on an individual level it can be a, a car accident or it can be a divorce something a change in the family structure a, a person dies in the family it's a catastrophe so we start asking why why are the, all these things happening what is the meaning and when you ask a question you usually do get an answer it may take some time but uh, we often don't ask we just go on the normal routine every day. Um, I was thinking that um, when this period of a catastrophe is quote quote and I think it's a lot man-made is going to go through and it's over so it's possible that a lot of people have changed dimensions that means they have left their physical body and they have gone to another dimension with their with their energy body with the light body and those who stay they have totally changed and the change is what we need we all know 
Even President Obama said, change, we need a change. But I don't think that most people thought that the change would be coming through catastrophes. Because that is one way. There are other ways, if we would be evolved enough as a human race, we wouldn't need to arrange these catastrophes. We would start being more lovable and more considerate and start seeing the whole picture of the universe. But we are on a very low level as human beings, unfortunately. Uh, sometimes they, uh, they compare us to ants. We also think that the ant hive is beautiful. They have an intelligent civilization, they have the queen and they have all the, all the workers and they, are, they have babysitters and whatever. But how do we communicate with them? Only through telepathy. And telepathy is a man-made, man-born thing that everybody has, but we don't realize it and so we don't use it. And we say, oh, it was a coincidence you called, I just thought about you. Oh, it was a coincidence I met you, I got a letter from you. There are no coincidences. Just, just like the coincidence where we are here today, it's Saturday the 17th of April, and you were supposed to leave yesterday with the plane for Norway. But no planes are flying due to the volcano, so now we are here with a brand new day we didn't know we had. And we just, you know, the energy is, is, is more, you can say it's more relaxed, because now it's like we have to stay in the present, because we don't know when there's a plane. Exactly. That is a very, very good point. We have to stay in the present. It's today. There's no tomorrow. Yesterday is gone. What is important is today, and most people, most of us, we always think I'm going to do this next week, I'm going to go there and whatever. Nobody now in Europe, Northern Europe, knows when they're going to travel, at least by plane, because we don't know when the planes are going. So again, there's something very good in the catastrophe. It makes people start thinking and staying in the now. And that, uh, yeah, That's the whole point, and, and if we look at, um, you know, it, it's about contrasts. So we have the, the dark side, we have the light side, if we look, but it all hangs together. So actually we should be very thankful, you know, we should be thankful for, for Bob, Boy Bush and, and, and the rest of the gang who has been, you know, destroying a lot of the planet. But they really have just done their job because they have just pushed, you can say, the dark energies forward so we can get over it. So we can get to the light side where we will have the real unity, where we'll have people to go together and so so if just like you said everything is part of you know we just have to look at the perspective what side of, of what angle we look at things from yeah you were quite right when you said that the dark side has showed himself now anybody with normal brains can understand that there's something very very wrong on this planet the whole system is wrong and that has to be changed again the name change 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 is coming and we, every one of us, every single one of us, are part of the change. And what we think, we have enormous energy. You know, the power of thought is really demonstrated. It is very, very strong if you use it and correctly. So if we all start, you know, gathering together and start sending the love frequency, because every, every feeling has a frequency, and, of course, love frequency necessarily doesn't have anything to do with sex. But if it is combined, of course, it's wonderful and it's meant to be. But uh, the aim for this planet, I think, is actually for all of us to experience universal love. And that would be the love not only to your husband, to your wife, to your family, to your friends, to your pets. It goes beyond all borders. Now, that's very, very high I would say aim, but that is the aim for all planets in the universe. And when we one day reach to that point that we are going to look at everything with the loving eyes, I think we have achieved an enormous uplift for the frequency of planet Earth. And we, we're heading there. But now, as I said, we are in the very bad chaotic situation before we have to go there. And it is through pain, sometimes. When you say pain, I also think of a birth, because many women are experiencing a lot of pain when, when they have to give birth, and it can be very challenging. I, I, of course, I cannot speak because I, you know. But um, it's like, you know, Mother Earth is pregnant now, and she's going through a tough period, 
uh, with, with many challenges, but we are seeing a new earth emerging. We are seeing actually you can say the birth of the new human being where we where we will be in love where love will be the the so-called value you can say the only value real value because the others are pseudo values but actually with the with the painting in, in the background of you that's actually where we are going where we all will you know we will take our own hand and forgive ourselves and forgive others set ourselves free set others free and be as one because we have so much power, we can create everything. We can, you know, we have so many resources on this planet. Everything is possible. I think that was a, that was a good um, idea. You you said that planet Earth is giving birth, because uh, when a female gives birth, of course the fetus is there, and it goes through a tunnel, through a dark period, to come to the light, and very very strangely when you do hypnotic regressions with people so most people experience fear when they are being born going through the tunnel which they have to do to come to the light to come to to this world so we are right now in the dark tunnel and the light is already there i mean we can sense it we can see it and we understand it it's coming but it's not yet there. How long it takes before Mother Earth has given birth to the new human being, to the new planet frequency, I don't think anybody can say, but it is right there. And I don't think it takes too many, too many years before, before the most people on this planet start seeing the huge universe from totally a different angle. And one of the things that is needed, of course, that authorities would be honest and authorities would give the honest information about space travel, for instance, because that would already open up the eyes. And if the authorities would give honest information of what we actually know, what science actually has today as knowledge, it's, it's flabbergasting majority doesn't know because they're dependent on, on, on normal TV, on, on normal radio, on normal um, newspapers and those do not give very much correct information, un unfortunately. So the information comes from within and from other people and also now through internet which is I think internet is the biggest revolution that we have ever had, bigger than the industrial revolution, because it has changed the communications totally. Now the, the, anybody who can go into internet, and the young people do, they can get information from anywhere in the world in a second. Yeah. And they don't have to rely on the disinformation by the authorities. So that's, that's wonderful. But they are already shutting down a program in, in Australia, somewhere in England, and planning that usual people whom unfortunately the elite calls um, sheep or, or even cows. Mm. So they, they could be shut off from the internet. And but President Obama can do that because now he has the power. Yeah. I hope it doesn't happen. But if we do get, you know, say, when, when will we reach the light? How, how far is the light? If we just had to look in the perspective, you know, of the Mayan calendar, that has been going on, let's say, for the last 5,000 years, and it has been precise all the time, then I just say, would the last two years skip, or would they miss the last two years when all the others have, have been right? But right now, in the period we're in, right now, that goes on to November 2010, it's like a revelation period where all the, you know, the dark things will come out of the closet and everything will come to the surface and people will have a mass awakening, which is already going on. Sure. That's also why we see, because it has to balance, so we see the so-called evil powers and dark powers, they're trying to, to, they're desperate now because they cannot keep up with the mass awakening. But what will happen from, you say, November 2.10 to October 2.11 is actually we're going into what is called the seventh day, where we would be much more co-creating, we would be much more, you could say, in alignment with ourselves, but of course, this is an ongoing process, so it's not something about we have to sit and wait for uh, 2012, uh, 2012 and see what happens. Because it's an ongoing process and we have to, you could say, climb the 
the, you could say the light pyramid now, we have to go up the stairs now, take the stairway to heaven, you can say. Uh, every day by aligning ourselves, by being in our center in the now, and by using our intention, our power, power of thought, uh, focus. So actually, you know, we are, we need to turn up the love, we need to turn up the compassion, the, yeah, the feeling. Well, I think it is automatically happening with the awakening of the masses. And the awakening of the masses happens through these catastrophes, partly. And also through the information that people are given. And not only the information, but their own experiences. When you yourself have had a dream, a very significant dream, for instance, a, a, a precognitive dream, which, which tells what you are experiencing in the so-called future, of course, there's no time, linear time, and there's no time in the universe. Everything happens now, but with our three-dimensional world, so we think that it's yesterday and today and tomorrow. So when you experience, for instance, a very strong precognitive dream that comes through physically afterwards, that changes your view of the world. That changes the view, how is it possible? How could I have dreamt something that I didn't know about that came true? So is it that everything is already planned? Everything is there fixed? Well, it's not fixed because you can change it. But I think these dreams also give a warning that if something is going to happen which is negative, you can change the negativity. Like somebody dreamt of a car accident, exactly saw the, how it happened. And the next day was in the car and all of a sudden saw that, hey, this is, this is it. This is the accident. So stopped and did not go through the uh, through the crossing and avoided the car accident so you can change the reality also and when you have out of body experiences near death experiences that totally changes your view of what it is to be a human being and so far as the majority in the western world not in the eastern they believe in 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 in, in reincarnation they understand more things of of the I would say the psyche than the Western world, especially the white male Western world. So, so uh, when this information comes through into our hearts and into our brain, then we will change. And every day somebody realizes something. Every single day somebody comes and says, look, I had this experience. I mean, how do you explain this? Well, there's no explanation in the three-dimensional world. You have to expand your views. And we do. And that's exactly where we say we are heading into today is actually it's a, um, it's a day 13 in the Mayan calendar and that's about co-creation and that's where we are heading and when people become you say wake up become conscious and use their power of thought right they will realize how much they create of their own day of their own reality and that's it when we look at how the media is working today they are constantly feeding people with negative stuff with, with violence, with, with lies, with porn, with everything that disconnect all your chakras, it makes you like dumb down so you will not be able to actually open up and awaken so actually the medias are dangerous but we will be co-creating much more consciously in the period coming now, we already do and you know when I co-create something and it shows up, you know sometimes it's a bit scary because you know um, even if I have uh, forgot what I uh, was wishing for or remembering or whatever. You know, when it shows up, it's just so your heart starts to... <laughs> because, excuse me, uh, who's in control here? And, and when we find out how much power we all have, you have so much power, you know, it's... it's you told earlier, you, you call yourself the pink icebreaker, you know, the loving icebreaker to to clear the path for humanity and to open doors and so but when we le realize how much power we have and how much power according to the painting in the background when we really take each other in the hand when we really connect our hearts to each other no matter if we are black blue pink gray green whatever just by being who we truly are divine beings spirit beings on an earthly mission that's right on an earthly mission and everybody has a mission. Somebody asked that what do I have to do to find out my mission and I said whatever is important to you what you're doing that is your mission. For instance a housewife with children says well what can I do to change the world? 
I said, you have all the power in the world in your heart and in your thoughts. So when you're doing the dishes, you can think and send positive energy to the planet or to a special group or special person you want to help or whatever. So you have all the powers. And when somebody says, well, what is the highest, quote, quote, of course, we are all equal in the spirit, but what on this planet is the highest mission you can have? You'd sort of think quickly that maybe to be a famous scientist with a Nobel Prize or, or something like that. No, it is to be a housewife with children. And why is that? Because the housewife with children only gives love. Only gives love to the children and doesn't get titles or money or whatever recognition outside the home. And we don't think that because many times people who are at home working with children, working with the house, they think, well, I'm only a housewife. And I every time correct, I said, don't ever say that I'm only, because that is the highest thing you can do, raise up the next generation with love. And the love frequency, of course, is also the healing frequency. Uh, as a medical doctor, I was very surprised when I was working in the field several decades ago, that I had the ability to, to give healing. I had read about it and I knew that everybody is an energy, so why not? So I just tried. I said, let me see, because a friend of mine was going to a gynecological operation, a gyne professor who happened to be my, my classmate from medical school had diagnosed a, a hard three centimeter tumor in the ovary. And this was a Saturday and she was going to the hospital on Monday so I said, let me try, let's make an experiment. So I put my, I concentrated that the energy would flow through me, not from me, but through me like a water faucet. And I put my hands on her stomach, but not on the stomach, but uh, maybe 10 centimeters away. And all of a sudden I started feeling a prickling in my hands. You know, it was, it was incredible. It was warm and it was prickling. And I was concentrating and she said, look, it, it, it hurts. I said, it can't hurt because I'm not touching you, but it was the energy that was, you know, coming through. And then at the end, when she went on Monday um, to the hospital to have the operation, the, the doctor tried again, you know, check the tumor and took a pencil into, into her hand and was sort of pondering. And, and so the patient says, what's wrong? Well, I can't find the tumor anymore. And then the patient said, look, uh, my friend Ron who was giving me healing. Oh, it's one of those things again, you know. She just, you know, put it aside and that's it, no, no operation. And another time, you know, a patient had a very, very bad, bad uh, bursitis. You know, it was all swollen and red here. And again, I said, look, uh, let's try. Because it's, you know, otherwise you'd have to have, a, you know, medicaments and, and keep it in, in a mitella for, for a week or two or something, not touch it. So I just again put my hand over it and all of a sudden she says, look, it, it, it feels funny. It feels like you would be injecting, you know, an injection into the joint. I said, that's exactly what I should do. I should give you a cortisone injection in this case. But of course I didn't. I was just giving healing, the energy. Next morning she was totally fine. She was, you know, could move all over. It was just totally, totally gone. Now. I was flabbergasted. I mean, I thought, why don't we teach this technology in the medical schools? You know, then you would have to take another look at what it is to be a human being. And I know in, 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 in the nursing uh, schools, sometimes, uh, at least in, in New York, there are nursing professors who are using healing and there's absolute medical proof that it works. I mean, you can give healing to anemia patients with the normal medical treatment and with the healing treatment and your hemoglobin rises more than with the normal medical treatment. So there is absolute, absolute proof, but doctors are not interested. Why not? Because it changes the worldview, the view, what it is to be a human being and big pharma gets no money. That is behind it. That's why it's being suppressed all over. But we are all healers. We are all oh, yeah. healers when we make the two one, and like Jesus said, we have to make the two one, the inner as the outer. And it can be, you say you can understand that in so many ways, but what I see is making the two one, 
I personally see as making, you know, making really the light body and the body one, making the two brain hemisphere in harmony so you will have a clear connection or a, I use it as you have a, like a tube in your head going up a glass <laughs> tube where you can see all the impulses going up and down like, like little uh, things and you know we all are healers because you know sometimes when I go into a room of course I have a lot of personal power and uh, I radiate normally a smile and you know I'm, I'm positive and optimistic you know I, I, I don't want to look pessimistic <laughs> always find another way but you know people say oh I just feel so much better when you're around of course if I am at peace with myself if I am in harmony you know and we all have the ability but we have to realize we have to admit that we are spirit beings in an earthly temple our body we, we are not earthly beings seeking spirit. That's the other way, opposite right. way around. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why we can radiate. Uh, some people seem to have, I would say, more energy or they use their energy more. And when somebody comes in with a lot of energy into the room, you know, you can feel it. I mean, you can really feel the radiation. You can even measure it with your hand. You can feel it where it goes. And it's interesting that if you smoke, your energy diminishes or if you if you drink alcohol it also diminishes and if you're sick of course it goes your energy goes more in and if you're healthy happy and fine so it radiates all over and that radiation causes has an effect on other people so sometimes you know people say oh it's so good to be like with you because you radiate the, the positive energy and then there are some people who are draining your energy and you feel uncomfortable and you don't want to be there because they are really draining your energy and and uh, when we would understand more everybody that we are dealing with energy frequencies vibrations life would change we wouldn't be so so engaged with the materials and with the material body because that is only mostly water and 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 it's only like a coat of arms for us so that we can physically be seen and doing things but when we take that energy of ours the energy body the light body so that it really has an effect in all our contacts that will change the world that is the change but we need to be conscious that hey it just doesn't come like that you have to concentrate you have to focus on that, what you want that's where we are going you know, we have right now we have like a, you can say the dualistic uh, mind or worldview is very dominating, and that's where we have the ego, we have the fear, and when you are in dualism, your energy state will always be lower, and fear has to do with low energy because if you have high energy, you vibrate high energy, you cannot fear because it's the other end of the pole, you can say. But where we are heading are into the unity again, the unity consciousness. And this is also why, because we have a, you know, many people are in a kind of dilemma today, because they have to say goodbye to the old world, which mm -hmm. actually has changed. So they are holding on to the old world and say, Err, and fighting and debating and fighting the neighbors and so. But when we start to, we have to change from within. We have to cultivate ourselves. But when you go to the grocers, you go to the shop to buy things. You know, if you smile at the man or the women, woman there, if you just say a little word you don't have to the whole day has changed that's right so you recognize the person who is in a service uh, uh, profession often they are not recognized all you have to say a, a nice little thing like oh you got a nice dress on or you look happy today or are you okay or whatever just a little thing that you consider the other person and it it's it saves the whole day and somebody says thank you for you know being kind to me thank you for helping me like yesterday i got a uh, i needed an envelope and a lady had one and, and and gave it to me i said no no it doesn't cost anything you can have it i i was so happy you know you can do so little things to 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 make other people glad and happy and 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 they're small things they're not big ones you know we, we don't change the world with huge things in one day but the small drops you know, there, there's mm. the raindrop going on the on the on the stone, tank, 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 and in some years there is a hole. A raindrop can make a hole in stone. 
You wouldn't think it can, but it can. So it's just repeating, 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 sending the positive energy. Now we're in the, uh, the countryside. We're actually in the middle of nature here in, uh, right. in the spider's web, we call it. <laughs> we, we named it. But um, I used to live in Copenhagen, uh, of course, with a lot of people. But I, was, I have always lived in nature. And then I had seven years in Copenhagen before my energy body and everything just said, get out of here, you know, get out of here very fast. And it's funny because here in the countryside, everything can, you, you know, it doesn't take a lot. All the help comes and people are friendly and they will help each other and so, but it was a completely other atmosphere in the cities because the nature is so far away. Everything is on, you know, there's stones all over you, you cannot no. hardly see any trees anymore in the cities. So it's, it's really, the love energy is, is very more easy to find in nature, but people need to find the nature within. Uh, if they just would use the forest more and, you know, hug a tree, go out and just be with nature, be with animals, just skip the computer, skip the television and be more true. Because all people, they know this, we have it all inside, we know what we want, we also know what make, makes us feel good, but we often, we often do the opposite things. Well, maybe that's the, the reason why in, in Russia and Scandinavia many people who, who can afford it, they want to have a summer place. It can be very primitive, no, 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 you know, flush toilets or anything, no electricity. But they have a little bit of land around, a forest or something, a pond. They have the birds, they have the, the deer, whatever. And, and they can work and feel the earth with their hands and with their feet. I mean, there has to be a reason why we go from cities with beautiful apartments, maybe, to a primitive little cottage in the country. And what we do there, I just read that um, that the former former president of, of Russia, Brezhnev, had had a, a little dacha, and what he was doing there. So he was, you know, planting potatoes and radishes and whatever. You wouldn't think that a president is doing things like that. Well, he needed that. We all need that, and I think that's what we we should sort of remember to go. And and of course, there are people more and more waking up and going to the nature. And then some go to the whole extreme, you know, they, they sort of go into the holes in the, in the mountains and they sit there and they meditate, that's fine. Because of course their energy helps a lot too. But it uh, sounds a little bit strange for normal working people that, uh, that somebody can go to, to, a, to a forest and live there by himself for years. Well, that was his mission. That was his mission to do that and send the love energy to all of us. And we all have a mission. And I think as long as we don't find out what our mission is, that we don't feel it, that I'm doing the right thing, you know, you're searching. And when you're searching, you're a bit insecure. And then when you find, this is what I need to do, this is what I like to do, this is what I can do also to help other people. And of course that is the basis that we need to help each other. When you help somebody, somebody helps you. And, and until this attitude comes through in all classes of, of, of society, well, we need a change. We are not there now, but we will go there, definitely. Yes, we will, that's for sure. Uh, in, uh, within the last week, I have talked to uh, uh, several people, but I've talked to a man in Copenhagen and a woman who lives uh, close by here, the, the woman who has been treating with these uh, singing bowls. And the man in Copenhagen, he said, uh, he got a device and then he said, oh, immediately I started to feel happy, I started to feel joy. And the woman told me, she went into the uh, town nearby here and she said when she came there, she immediately started to feel sad and depressed. And you and I have talked a lot about uh, mobile phones, about radiation, about what the mind suffers from all these things. Yeah. Then I found out I was reaching the French professor Santini, he's not m anymore in this dimension, but he made a study where he found out that the libido, uh, the life force or the love force is being lowered in men and women by the electrosmog, by the electromagnetic radiation. And Years ago, I asked, I ask, you know, like you say, you, you mm. put out a question and the answer comes. I asked what was going on with me when I went to Copenhagen. 
And the answer came several months afterwards, the God force is being shut down. So that is what's happening with me when I go to Copenhagen, due to the electrosmog, due to all the different kinds of energies there. And, you know, when we're talking about love, you know, then I would say that actually, you know, electrosmog and the wireless society is anti-love. Definitely. That's the biggest problem we're going to have and we already have in the world. Um, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about atom bombs or something, which are, of course, bad too, but they haven't been used for 60 years. So why don't the authorities talk about the electrosmog, the danger of electromagnetic fields, and especially they are in the cities? I know also of, of um, research when people are going, scientists are going and, 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 and measuring the microwaves and, and uh, electromagnetic fields in the cities, and they are just you know, they are so red, quote, quote, that people should not be there. And especially they put them at nights in residential areas through the new new lamps which have different frequencies to cause different kinds of emotional outbursts, if, if I can say that. Mm -hmm. So they are governing people today with electromagnetic fields. And, and that is not positive. So I wondered, because we do need electricity normally, would it be a world that wouldn't have it? Someday, if you know everything goes electri electronic uh, devices go kaput all over the world, what will happen? Maybe this Icelandic eruption of the volcano and, and the simultaneous Chinese uh, earthquake and Haiti, Chile, which have been recently, maybe they are sort of forerunners to show what can be happening here because now we can't fly, now there's trouble all over where the Icelandic ashes are coming. It shows what can happen when either nature or man-made catastrophe, which it also could be, is causing to us. And now we can't go out, so people are in, in the way that's good, because then we sit next to each other and we talk, instead of going there and there and there, because you can't, uh, you can't travel. So there are always good things in the bad things too, but um, it's part of the change. And I do hope the good things will come up further and more and more and more. And it needs that the awakening, the mass awakening of all the people. And it's happening, it is already happening, but uh, it needs to be happening even more. But you know, I've been studying all this about electromagnetic and electrosmart because I, I feel it. You know, I, I don't know all the scientific facts because I feel it. I, I don't have to. I, I feel it yeah, exactly feel what it things well, are yeah. and I can feel it in my brain what's happening. I know what's happening in my brain. And what I spend most of my time is actually to, to have my clear connection to my spirit or my light body or whatever. You know, to, to have the clear resonance field and I can feel what happens in the resonance field. And what I find is very sad is that, you know, when you observe people, you study people, you see how, uh, according to when the electrons mark have really risen and everyone has got a mobile phone, I sense that they become more and more disconnected from the spirit, from their true self, from love, right. from, from ethics, from morality, from conscience, from crea creativity. All what is really part of creation, part of, you know, wow, this is enthusiasm. What is enthusiasm? Enthusiasm comes from an plus theos, that means God within, or in God, or possessed by God. And you know how many people are enthusiastic today? No. Because we are disconnected, so we cannot feel it. We don't feel the impulses when they come. This is what I feel the most sad, and especially you know when they give children mobile phones. Oh yeah, that's, that's criminal actually, because um Authorities do not give the, the correct information that it is really dangerous. It changes your DNA even, it changes your genes and, 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 and it causes brain tumors. Now why would any parent give a weapon, microwave weapon to their child to be destroyed if the parent would know what it is? But uh, those who make them, they only think of money and those who are in the supreme elite if I can call that they want people eliminated so for them the more victims we have for microwave radiation 
with mobile phones, the better it is for them and the worse it is for the mankind. That has to stop. Uh, I was in a conference of non-lethal weapons in, in Germany 2009 in, in May and uh, somebody said uh, uh, an interesting uh, sentence that those who are manufacturing these gadgets they don't think of the health of the population they just think of the technology how they can make it smaller and smaller and more effective and that should be combined that the health and the gadget technology would be together that they would think that hey we don't want this we don't want this we would like to have something that is less destructive now I heard that um, a couple of years ago uh, they were planning like Nokia giving mobiles quote quote even to to babies I mean very very small children under three uh, that was stopped and they didn't do it because in international congresses they sometimes show the truth they don't show the truth in the mass media and, and radio TV and and and, um, and the and the, the papers but in the conferences they show it and that was clearly about the dangers especially for babies and and children under 18 because their skull is not thick enough and their neurology system hasn't developed enough so they stopped so that can also happen then they were planning that hasn't happened yet like with the tobacco industry that now they are putting labels that tobacco may be hazardous to your health because after that they are not liable for the damages they said well look you you, you smoke and and we warned you so we're thinking that putting that on labels on the mobiles too but that maybe at least it would help with the parents not giving the babies and the, and the and the, the children if it would stay that this causes maybe not only hazards for your health but causes maybe brain tumors it, it always says in the instruction manual when you read them carefully also with the uh, household machines and so it says uh, research shows that electromagnetic fields are not dangerous but when according to Nokia in, in Finland I heard a doctor once said that uh, Nokia was not researching in, um, in mobile phone communication but dialing up your cortex talking about you know controlling <laughs> the minds of people right. and what we are seeing because if just people would try to not use their mobile phone for a week unplug all the wireless equipment in the house for a week they will change them dramatically normally within two three days people they are sleeping much better their skin starts to to be much more uh, soft in the face they start to feel much more better because the constant pulses of the uh, microwaves okay. is gone so they can be free again and then connect to what they truly are that's that's exactly so but uh, it's never coming out uh normally in the mass media that um, mobile phone makes you also addictive like the PC your data you know you you get addicted to it and you can see it with youth school ch children I mean they are always on the phone and and it's right there and sometimes they have several of them and they can't live without it and if you take it away you know it's a big cry oh you can't do this to me because they have gotten the addiction already which is probably sent with the certain frequency to them to their brain so we have a lot of cleaning up to do also technically in this world but it has to start from within because that is of course most important and when you you raise your level of your vibrations then you also automatically start seeing things differently mm -hmm. and then you stop using a mobile or not sitting so much in the in front of the TV you know of, of mm -hmm. the mind control programs that they have yeah. in certain films and they have a very very devastating and bad effect but it has to come from here first and the parents you know the parents I wonder I know people who have children I don't have any children mm. but you know I've done all this work for children and That's coming right. uh, generations because yeah. I see what's going on and yeah. I chose I said okay I've been doing this since I was 33 and I say Okay, I cannot do this work if I have a child because, you know, I'm putting myself in the front line. But I did it to the children. But the ones I know who have children, why do they give their children mobile phones? Because they don't know. They, they know. The ones they know, they know very well. But they are afraid to think what people will think about them. They are afraid that their kids will be, you know, in the schools. They, the other kids will, will 
made fun of them and say, oh, you don't have a mobile phone and so We all have to step out of all these comfort zones or what you should do and what you should not do and listen within. Yeah, you should not listen to what others think about you if you feel that you're doing the right thing. Because others do not know what your mission is. I don't know what somebody's mission is whom I don't know. So why should I interfere with his life or her life and say you, you should do this and this, oh you can't do this and this. Like I know a friend of mine was criticized because she wasn't crying at the funeral of her husband. You know, oh, you're not crying even. She couldn't, she was so in shock that she couldn't even cry. And she was criticized for it. And I thought that's, that's pretty mean of other people to put their own frames on somebody's behavior and say, you have to behave like this. You can't behave like that. We're all individuals. And we behave the way we feel is correct for us. And others should not interfere as long as we don't hurt anybody. I think you can do anything as long as you have the clear mind, I will never hurt anybody. Then you can do what you, what you want. And you can use your, your mind capacity, or rather your spirit, your light body, your telepathic, your clairvoyance, to expand and help others. Because many people need help and they are afraid to ask. You know, it's sort of shameful that... I, I would need help. I am, I'm not going to do that, especially not males, right? So you can you. help them. You, you, honest, you're not that kind, but <laughs> okay. there are many. You can help them unconsciously so they don't know. You can send them love, energy, love, love, love. Every day, just put them into your thoughts and, and send them love. And they don't know about it. And even if they're sick, they may get better because of you sending them love frequency and healing frequency. And uh, it's been researched in the States quite a bit uh, with some excellent doctors that they are doing also healing with operations. And where they're giving healing with operations and afterwards, those patients recover much faster than those that are operated normally and only get the medical treatment. So even that should come to the main medical media, but it doesn't. Medical journals don't print anything of healing. It's I've tried fl many times. No, even if it's facts, 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 so-called school medical facts. No, because it changes everything. And that's what we want. That's what we need. We need a change of attitude, what it is to be a human being on this planet. Yes, we do. And... Um when, when you talk about the healing frequency uh, to heal people and, and the love frequency, you know, I, I often wonder because if you look at uh, uh, healers, uh, clairvoyants, and, and others, you know, they always mostly use a mobile phone, and, and many of them have wireless equipment, and so even in their clinics, and so. And I just say, you know, everything is about uh, energy, frequency, and vibration. And for me, what I know about these things, and I, I believe I know just a bit of it, you know. It doesn't go together. The wireless society doesn't go together with healing. That's right. That's right. But on the other hand, we do need also modern equipment to be in contact with people. But it doesn't have to be in the healing room anyway. No. It should be somewhere else. Like someone said, you can't get rid of mobile phones. They have come to stay. That's true. But we can influence so that they would be less, uh, uh, less dangerous for, for our health. And that, of course, is technology. And that's why the medical has to work together with the technology so that it is less and less and less radiation that is bad. But what they're doing now, they're increasing, increasing, increasing. So they are more dangerous to our brain capacity and our brain and our health than they were in the, in the old days, so-called. So and when you think of it, about 20 years ago, people lived without mobiles. I mean, they were able to. Now they are not able to. They have to be there all the time and talk in the bus and the train and the trick and whatever. They, that's so important that they are 24 hours there. That's it's crazy. They are disconnected, so they need that's the right. connection tool to, to feel alive. Because well, without the phone, they don't feel alive. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but, uh, but anyway, I, I do think that it is very, very negative for the health of people and for the communications too, because instead of, of you know, going to meet somebody and sit down and talk... Social energy? Yeah, they watch TV. For instance, I've often gone to, to, to visit somebody, 
and we say hello hello and get a cup of coffee and then they switch on the TV and two hours go and everybody watches the TV now that was not meant to be as a social visit but this is the way it has become it sort of hypnotizes you and that of course can change click but then somebody in the family says I want to see that program you know <laughs> so there are many ways to to sort of do things you were just mentioning, mentioning that people are like hypnotized by the television and if you change that way. Is it, it is like, you know, we are having like a mass hysteria today. It's like that, I say we need to get people out of the mass hysteria, you can say, but we need to, they need to stay calm. They need to be more loving. They need to, to, to focus on what they really want in their life. Uh, and how can you cure the, the television? Dr. Rowney, how can you uh, switch it? Just push the button okay. off. Okay. But people don't do that. I think uh, one of the reasons for the, this uh, hysteria, which was very well demonstrated with the swine flu injections, uh, is that deliberately some elite authorities create fear. And that was a brilliant uh, you know, mind control experiment in a way. People went in thousands to have a, a toxic injection and I'm sure they haven't stopped even if things have calmed down now but it's just um, for a while then they take other vaccines other injections other means to cause fear and how do you fight against fear because it's ignorance number one that's why awareness is so so important that people know that they are planning for this planet something which is not very positive but if you know it's man-made planning you can take it differently than if you think that it's oh this is terrible this is a you know whatever uh, so number one awareness 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 and when you know then you can start maybe if you are able to that's very difficult I at least say personally to send love vibrations to those who harass you and to the elite who wants to get rid of two-thirds of world population. It's not easy, but if we succeed in that, that takes away the arms, quote quote, from them. They can't attack you. If you really put on strong love vibrations to somebody who is evil towards you, you know, he just can't act. He becomes, quote quote, paralyzed. And that is, of course, the best way to use your thought energy, your, your light body, your energy to change things. And then you're surprised, certainly, when you see that people do change. I did an experiment. I had, a, I had once a, a lawyer as my, my, um, my chief a long time ago. And, um, and the first time we met each other, there was just hate. I mean, I had never met him, and he had never met me, and there was just hate vibration, and I couldn't understand why. And then um, he bullied me and bullied me and bullied me for 12 years. I endured. And actually now, today, I'm very thankful for him, because being under constant daily pressure, unjust pressure for 12 years, now I can take this attacks with electromagnetic fields and with the secret services and whatever they are doing to me and my family it doesn't feel though so bad because i've been immunized mm -hmm. already exactly. so you know it's, it was very strange at that time i never thought of it but then i asked in automatic writing going into trance and an energy which is not mine but from outside i believe wrote i said why why was i you know why, why, why was this, this hate between us? I mean, a strange person. And why was he bullying me all the time? And then I found out, automatic writing said, that in a so-called previous physical existence, I had been his chief, and he had been working under me, and I bullied him all the time. And I thought, oh, Christ, you know, this, this serves me right. Yeah, exactly. And I changed my attitude then, and I decided, it was very difficult, but I decided that I'll make an experiment in my mind, not telling anybody, 
and in this hand I, I had a knife, in this hand I had a rose, or a bouquet actually, of flowers. And when I thought of him, he was coming, so instead of the knife, I put the knife in back of my back and gave him the bouquet of flowers. First I had to do it like this, you know, like, oh, <laughs> in my mind. But in three weeks it was very easy. Mm -hmm. And in three weeks, he started opening the door for me, helping me with my coat. And then he went around the office and said, Rowney has changed. I hadn't changed, I didn't think at least. But the relationship, the energies between us had changed. Yeah. And ever since, he was okay towards me, after bullying me for 12 years. Yeah. So, so, you know, it's incredible what you can do, do with your with energy and your mind. But it, it shows Take the flowers. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it, it shows exactly, you know, we started with fear, you said what when peer, uh, people are in fear and so. It, it's like, you know, all the media and all this stuff, all the chaos they are uh, serving through the media, it disempowers people so that they become little me, helpless. What can I do? I'm so little, I'm so small. And I've been experiencing a lot of this in Denmark because I've been so, you can say, pushy, but I have actually been very loving. But they <laughs> take it as pushy, but they, because you have to have the, how to say, the big picture to know what it's all about. But, uh, but it, it's because when you are served all these big subjects, you know, then we have an earthquake there, earthquake there, and then we have swine flu. It's two big subjects for people to evaluate or understand through their emotions. So, you know, they have to find out what can they do for themselves, their family and the ones that are close to them because it takes a lot of energy, it takes a lot of attention to be able to watch these big subjects. I normally say to people, look at it as a movie. See the movie passing by, an earthquake, oh, 200,000 killed. And so because you cannot relate to 200,000 people killed, it's too much for emotions. Just as one family member dies, you are totally blocked. What about 200,000? And it's all about, you know, fear is, is a low energy state. Of course, we cannot go from fear to, to love. That's opposite in the, if you look at, at a pole. But instead of fear, you can start climbing up and then perhaps it comes confusion or you can have doubt and so on. And then you become more and more and more. You have to take a little jump. But if people realize that fear is really just an indicator to say, excuse me, you're taking the wrong world here, you're taking the wrong path, and that's not the way to, to heaven, that's not the way to <laughs> love, you have to turn around. So fear is actually our best friend. You know, the place we are now in, in this house, which you have said you, you find gorgeous and so, I moved from Copenhagen to this place. And I came from noise and people all over, you know, I couldn't take it anymore. And radiation going on in the apartment, I was totally wiped out almost. So I had to get out of there. And this thing manifested. And the first two weeks, you know, I went into anxiety. I went into fear. I, I felt like shit, you know, it was all over. No, I, it was so dark here, you know, it's, it's so dark here. You could see all the stars, you know, in Quebec, you cannot see anything, you know, the street lamps. Um, <laughs> But then I sat here and I said, what can I do about this? You know, now I'm here. So I said, I'm the kind of person, you know, then I buy a lot of books. And I say, okay, let's find out what there is about fear and anxiety. And I start to study and I start to get into the now. Krishnamurti, uh, you know, freedom in the now and so. And what happened? After two weeks time, fear and anxiety, they said to me, or I said to them, you are welcome to stay, here's plenty of room, you can have each your room, and you can stay and you can have something to eat. Everything is possible here, but I will not give you more attention. So one of the days afterwards, I saw them leaving. You know, they went out on the little road here with their things over their shoulder and say, this place is bloody boring. So they left. And since that day, you know, there isn't really anything to fear since, as you say, you know, we, we cannot die. And yeah. Love is really the key. That's right. It sounds uh, sometimes sort of uh, too much to say because there's uh, so much misuse with the word of love. Americans use it very easily. They say, oh love, oh honey. Even you go in a, in a lift uh, in, in New York skyscraper, so the lady, you know, got, taking the lift up says, oh honey, would you? And I sort of look like I'm not your honey. but. <laughs> 
we in Europe are more reserved, but it, it is very, very lovely, actually, when, when you are very, oh dear, they say, and they don't know you. Well, we don't say dear and honey to, to anybody in Europe, especially not in the North, if we don't really care for them and, and, and know them. So there are many different levels you can use that word, and I think the word love has been misused a lot. And, and what we are trying to, to sort of convey now is that the, the, the goal is the universal love, which has nothing to do with sex and nothing wrong with sex, absolutely not. But when you also think that you are actually an energy of love, vibrations are the love energy, the light energy. So it, it changes also the situation between man and woman. I and mean, we always think that it's a male and a female, but it can be anything. You can love anybody, and I don't mean pedophiles, because I don't think they love, they just have sex. But you can love, whether it's a man or a woman, or it's your cat, or it's your dog, it's your friend, it's a love energy, but it's on a different vibrational level. And when you think again that, that our body has sex, male or female, the light energy does not have sex. So it's easy to understand that you love the energy of the other person. Mm -hmm. When you meet somebody on the same vibrational level, mm -hmm. you absolutely resonate. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference if it's male or female. Mm -hmm. And we have had a case now in Finland this year, and last year actually, uh, about a, a minister, Lutheran minister, who uh, had been married twice and, and children that were, you know, grown-ups, and he wanted to have a sex change. All his life he had felt that he was, uh, he was uh, like a female and feeling like a female, and then he decided that now I'm going to do it. And that he went out with it, which I think is very courageous, because in Finland we've had over a little over 100 sex changes a year. That's I, quite a lot, I think. And even three uh, uh, ministers have changed sex previously, but they've been doing it in secrecy. So, in a way, he gave face to, to this phenomena. And, and uh, he's very happy now. And his first wife uh, is together with him. And then he did say, I have a sexual problem. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you can understand because it's, it's a big change. But of course, it is the light energy. The, the spirit of you that feels to be female because in my mind it has been incarnating many many lifetimes in a female body and then for lessons and learnings we all have to be in both sexes to learn to, to have balance so he decided to incarnate now to to a male body and then he couldn't take it because the female came through all the time and on the other hand if you ask me, what his mission would have been, my opinion is absolutely. His mission was exactly to do this openly, to, to shake the whole country of Finland, that a minister can change sex. And why? You know, everybody started talking, everybody started thinking, why and what is, what is this? Without maybe thinking that, hey, love is the answer. Mm -hmm. If you love a person, it doesn't actually matter what kind of body you have, yeah. but he had to also teach our country, I think, uh, tolerance, because there are many people who don't, you know, they, they just shuttle off, this is terrible, you can't do these things. They don't remember that your light body has no sex. So I think he did a brilliant job, shook and hauled the country, you know, what, what it is to be a human being at least. And of course for him it's good that he's happy now. Talking about sex, when we talk about the sex madness going on in this world, you know, it's sex all over, it's porn, it's whatever. Yeah. It's like it has become the new religion almost, you know, it's every, every website you go to, there's a dating site. You need to have someone and they say you need to find love. I don't believe you find love through a dating site because it has, you know, then you fall in love with a picture, not with the energy. But we, we were talking about yesterday, we had this excellent talk about sexuality and I think I would like to, you know, if we could get back into that because it was very interesting, you know, with, we have the, 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 the male uh, sexuality today which is mostly about, you, like you said, you know, with the penis 
and you do three minutes and then and we are gone. And then with the, it's less than three minutes for most. Yeah, okay. then with 1. The, 1.7 or something. <laughs> and then with the female sexuality, which is completely different because there's so much frustration today and you know, it, it, it's so much focus about the mechanical sex, but it's right. not focusing about the, the really female, the, like men also have the female side. We have, sure. can you please, uh, because it was brilliant what we were talking yeah, about. Well, one of the sad things I think for the human race is that um, males do not understand often, some do brilliantly, but often do not understand anatomy of a human female because our sexual organs are so different and males think that females feel the same way they do and when they penetrate they think that's it, that's it. And very, very many women, even in some research about 70 80 percent women are not satisfied with with this copulation because males do not know that you have to first of all be tender and you have to show love not sex but love and be tender and caress and maybe a little kiss and whatever it takes a slow slow process the men are very fast and think that's it and then Many men, even when they're 60 years old, I know because uh, I have had patients when I was working in the field, they didn't even know that a woman has a clitoris and what is the, the purpose of it. Because only normally when you, when you caress the, the, the female um, sexual organs, you have to do that. You have to caress the clitoris, either before or after. But anyway, you can't just you know, ignore it because that's the way most women get their orgasm. And when you are 60 years old and you don't know the anatomy of a woman, your wife you've been married to for 40 years, now that's very sad, I think. And that's the, the dilemma, and it's, it's such a sensitive area that people are afraid even to talk to their husband and to their wife, that, you know, I don't like this, I like this, or whatever. And it should be normal, because it is normal. It's totally normal. I mean, we're supposed to have sex and to, to produce children. But it takes education, and I think the education should come already from schools. And it should not only be focusing on the anatomy and the mechanical side, but it should very, very much stress on the spiritual side, which it never does. Because if you give sexual education, it's, it's the mechanical side. But exactly, when, when you say we should focus on the spirit, mm. where, where you can say love flows yeah. in from, and when we look at it in, in the perspective of religion, you know, the, the, the Vatican has been doing a lot about separating sex from love and some people say that the Vatican is binding most of the porn industry. I don't know, but some people, some voices are saying that and when we talk about the uh, pedophiles and so, you know, we never know, but sex has been separated from love and what we talked about yesterday was about, you know, people have been locked into the physical physical so-called reality and that's what happens to as well with the sex because with all this mechanical sex you know about <laughs> and then one and a half minute or you say one, <laughs> 1.7 minutes or whatever you know and then the, the man snores and the woman is just excuse me what happened here it's uh, actually if the you know if if the sex is not together with love, if it's not the love energy that really runs the engine you can say or right. the, the sexual act actually you will drain your spirit, you will drain your soul because uh, if it's just a mechanical you just drain and drain and drain your spirit and your soul but if the love is there it's, it's part of the yeah. unity it's part That's of right. the and that is actually what is, is strengthening the life force and if we talk about a man and a woman being together um, they are together from love and they really make love to each other and perhaps they want a child or they feel that there's someone sure. knocking knock knock on the doors of heaven or what you say <laughs> but uh, and they do it in love then the child will be born with a strong life force but if it's just something that happens like a coincident a Saturday night three o'clock in the morning you know after two bottles of red wine and whatever you know if there's no love in that in the moment in the moment where the soul says hey, now I'm here or whatever the, the, the child will not be have so strong life force. It's it's uh, so love is really 
love is very much needed, but I disagree with you because a little bit, because again, remember the body is just a vehicle, and even if it's done just by sex without love, it still gives a vehicle. And that soul, that energy, that light body, who comes to this vehicle, chooses it. Yeah. So, you know, he knows or she knows, it knows exactly where it's coming and why it wants to come just to this vehicle. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. what this vehicle and these parents can teach and what kind of destiny this soul is going to have, that is already known before it's entering the fetus yeah. in, in the spiritual realm. Like, um, my husband um, died already over 10 years ago and his, um, his uh, son uh, got married and, and had, a, had a, a baby with his wife and then some relatives uh, said that, well, he was so sad that he didn't live enough to see the, the first grandchild. It was interesting, I had contact with his energy and got information that he has already met the energy, the light body of that person who was incarnating as his grandchild. So on that level he already had made acquaintance yeah. with that and knew it before we in the physical world yeah. made acquaintance. It's an interesting idea and we don't think that way because it turns everything upside down. But it's, it's actually it's interesting when you look at your own family and you look at people you know and people you get to know, like, like you and I. No. Know, when you start to think and say, yeah, it all fits together. It's like a huge engine or it's like wheels. Uh, what do you call it? The, the wheels with the things on that just go into click, click, click. Everything fits. And then we just have to be careful about our rational mind that it <laughs> doesn't jump in and take control because no, it can't be that way. No, no, you have to. You 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 still stay here because that's safe. And so, you know, you have to really be listen to what comes because we get the messages all the time. Yeah, I think the human sexuality is interesting because <clears throat> we condemn often people who who act differently. We condemned in Finland, um, for instance, a, a good <laughs> example. A lady was um, chosen a journalist as as. Um, chief uh, editor of Lapland Times, Lapin Kansa. And then when she went, went to the interview, she was asked, are you married or what? And she said, yes. And, uh, and, and I think they had children too. And then it came out later that uh, she was lesbian and she was married to a woman. And that blew the whole thing up. You know, she was not one day in the job, she was thrown out. And then it became court cases, of course. She won at the end. And, and that showed, and she said in, 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 um, in the uh, newspapers that I have given a face to this phenomenon. And, and she had, because it again was all over the Finnish papers. Some people accepted that she was thrown out and some people said, no, this is, this is just stupid and it's against the laws too, discrimination. So when you think of, of love, if it's between women, or if it's between men, if you love your cat, and I don't talk about sex, I talk about love. So, so of course, it's the feeling that is there, number one. The manifestation may later be physical, but who cares? We have uh, the old-fashioned uh, thinking that only a penis is allowed to penetrate the vagina. We have a lot of holes, you know, up and down. And, and when you think that uh, women don't need a penis, you know, you can use your hand, you can use your tongue, you can use your whole body to stimulate, for instance, a female clitoris. So that changes again the male sort of penis fixation. And I know that young boys are very worried, you know, I have so many centimeters or this way and yeah. is that okay and this is too short or too... It's not the size that matters. It, it really doesn't matter because it is the love that you put into the whole thing. So, you know, again, we have to think differently than we are used to traditionally to think about sex and sexuality and our relationships. And when we talk about male and female, uh, yeah, in relation, you know, it's, uh, I wrote in my book about stress that women is the, the strongest 
sex, you know. Women have so much power and they say, oh, you just write this so you will get a lot of attention for women. No, no. women has the total connection to the, you can say, the unconscious net, where all the creativity, where all resides, they have so many sensations, they have so many feelings, they have the power, the, the powers in the feelings. Um, and, you know, women can give life. Uh, they're so magical, but of course men has been so afraid of women that they have suppressed them with power and power and power. And this is what is going to change now, because we will have a, a, a female controlled society in the future right. and it will come that's why also we see Obama has just said that uh, Mars is the goal Mars is the goal Mars is the planet of power so we actually you know there will be a kind of a, a thing going on because women have so much power when they use their power and not of course become men in their in their actions they have to be who they truly are they're so magical that's that's very true. But in business and in in um, in the government, uh, many women women have to behave like men, be hard to be listened to. If you're soft and 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 mild, you know you're just brushed away, unfortunately. But uh, what you said is is absolutely true. Females are stronger in their energy than males. Males are very very afraid, especially of of women who have high positions and high education. They are simply so afraid that they can become impotent and that's the worst thing that I think can happen to a man because they're so pennies fixed many times. But women can, you know, be on many, many fields and, and uh, they don't need this erection <laughs> that shows to a man that he's a man. That has to change. The fixing into that a, you, a man is, you know, the, his pennies or something like that. The males have to learn to be more soft female uh, sort of attitudes and vice versa. Also women have to learn some masculine traits but not too many. We have to go into the balance, androgyne in a way that we are both, we have both. I mean there are very many males who are with feminine traits or, or females with masculine traits. That's nothing wrong with that. But, but our society wants everybody to be a for because that's yeah. you know then you have everybody in control yeah. and everybody who goes out of control who does things differently if it's medicine yeah. alternative medicine yeah. oh no no this yeah. is you know dangerous. that's dangerous we but don't want that because that cannot be controlled it's exactly like Jesus said when he said make the two one because we all have the male and the female side of, of ourselves so we have to combine the female where we get all the inspiration and then get balance to the male side because manifestation when we want to manifest anything manifest anything into this dimension we're in now we need both we need yeah. uh, that means if we make the two one in each of us that means we will be able to actually that's what the taking the power back means we have to have balance in ourselves because then we become so powerful we become so strong and it's not about you know we become it's the force, it's the love that actually will flow when we combine both sexes within ourselves. So we, that's also what the painting in the back means, you know, the two sides. We have to have the Eastern Hemispheres and the Western Hemispheres that meet intuition with the rational mind. So we will actually be whole again. We will be integrated right. into ourselves, into each other, because we will all be really one. That's right. And we have to remember that the light body is neutral. It's both male and female and that's what we are. And it's eternal. That's very very important because that changes the thinking and the fate and everything. Anything that happens to anybody it changes because you know that you are eternal. You are an eternal energy, eternal soul. You cannot die and in different lifetimes you take different bodies, a male body once, a female body once, you die young once, you die in middle ages once, you die, die uh, in old age once, in different, different, different scenarios. On this planet, and then there's the vast universe, what we're doing on the other planets. And when we are meeting so-called ETs, mm. we actually are meeting ourselves in the future. So, you know, the expansion of our worldview, the expansion of our life, that's the goal. 
and it has to come with love. And when you talk about light body that we, when we have our light body and when we meet love and so, um, I just experienced something very, uh, I would say, it's, it's wonderful, e extreme, you know, it's, it's a so lovely soul, I would say, spirit or energy in a woman in another country. Of course, there's a kind of language, sometimes I don't understand everything and, and so it is, but we were talking about desire. Uh, you know the desire she asked me if I had a desire and I said no I, I cannot have a desire because she's so much more because her light body her energy is so bigger and, and desire was you know that's kind of the penis thing uh, it it's would, physical yeah it's physical yeah. it's it's more with the uh, thing with the, the penis yeah. uh, you know physical love yeah. yeah physical sex yeah but the other thing here it's so much more it's so much what I would s describe as pure love universal love and you know, it doesn't really matter how she looks, what she looks like, and anything. Uh, and then I saw how she looks, and she looks like an angel. But that's okay. You have to. That's just a bonus, you can say. But it, 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 it really the energy. It's the, it's the light. It's the light, and we are light. You know. That's right. It, and when you, when you meet the light, you resonate with. It's just it become a huge light. You know. It's, it's like lightning. Yeah, that's right. It is a lightning. And it takes us out to the universe. I don't know if I'm repeating myself, but I think we, we keep coming back to it's love we need. It's love the world needs. We, we, need, we need love. We need to... How can we put it? We don't have to put it because um, there are no words actually yeah. for the greatest things that happen within the heart of the human person. Uh, what it is, what we need to do is, is to make people aware, 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 aware that they are eternal light, they are eternal energy, they cannot die and the whole world's and our individual's development to higher realms is the goal. And that's it. And the extreme final goal is the universal love where we are all one like a droplet in the ocean and the droplet in the ocean today doesn't necessarily know that it is part of the ocean like we don't know as human beings in a vehicle of, of the body that we are all one in the energy and that's it we are all one thank you <laughs> thank you Dr. Rowney, we are having a lot of chaos in the world today. We have a lot of challenges. We are having a lot of uncertainty about wars breaking out, about a lot of stuff. And people are so much in fear. Many people are so much in fear. We need to empower. We need to empower the true light, the true power in people. And we can say that peace comes from love and war comes from anti-love. That's well said. But uh, again, you have to think of the seven billion people on this planet. How many are aware of their own power? How many are aware of all the deception that authorities are giving to them daily in mass media? Especially when it concerns so-called war, which can be invisible with electromagnetic fields. People just get depressed, they get zombified, students more and more uh, can't pass their exams so it's invisible how can we change that and i think really the only way is to to shake them up really shake them up and when they start seeing with new eyes in a way then we can do something we can change the world we can change the war to peace but it takes all of us and the question is are people willing are they willing really to stop with their daily chores, with their daily work for even five minutes a day and send love and light to this planet and to those who are warmongers. But, yeah, but we need, the media of course has done a lot of harm you can say because people they are so conditioned and influenced by it. But we need to focus on what we truly want, what we really wish to experience in this world. We have, it's like, 
when we look at the Avatar movie, it's like the two scenarios. We have the military complex running there, show you can say, and then we have the true nature people, you know, the, the fantastic world. We have the, you can say, hate contra love actually in, in how it's illustrated that movie. And, you know, we should all focus about what we truly want to experience. And because, you know, everything, as you always say, is energy. And whatever we focus our attention on, or our intention by the power of thought, we become. So it's, it's very important that we shut off the television and we are very, uh, how to say, we we very concerned about we put our eyes and ears to. Well, the media is totally controlled, that we know. There is not, I don't think, a single journalist who can do whatever he or she wants to and write and reveal things. There's always somebody breaking in and saying no. And if you really continue, you just get thrown out of the, of the whole newspaper. Uh, that is the problem. But uh, the very important thing you said is, is focusing. And also, what you hate, you become. Mm. I've learned that in my own life. Exactly. You know, I've said sometimes that <laughs> yeah. I would never do that. Mm. I would never ever behave like that. Yeah. And a few years go and I'm catching myself doing exactly the same. Yeah. And I just stop that, hey, why did I do this? That is how life teaches us. Yes. And when you condemn somebody in the way that, you know, you're doing this wrong, you shouldn't do, and I'm not talking about war because I don't think there's a single person on this planet except the elite who wants war. Usually people don't want war. No. But if you condemn some traits the, the person have, the sexuality a person mm. have, the way of life the person has, if you condemn it, you becoming itself, yourself. Yeah. And sometimes it may be so slow process that I sort of smile and say, if, if it doesn't come in this life, it comes in the next yeah. with interest. Yeah but uh, the focusing is extremely extremely important and you can do things with with your mind you can influence people you can make them th do things physically i remember i was once um, at a meeting in finland a health uh, meeting and there was an interesting person I, I thought i'd like to talk to this person and i concentrated hey come and sit next to me to my it was a smirgos board to, to to my table and the person did not went all the way to the other side of the room put the plate down and then i really concentrate like now you come here the person was like hypnotized took the plate turned around came straight 20 meters towards me sat down and said can i sit down and i said yes and i want to ask you what did you feel or do because you were already in the, in the other table you hadn't sat down, but the table was the the, the plate was there. She, this person said it was a lady uh, who was a, a, a teacher in in a uh, in a nursing school. It was a medical nursing mm. meeting, and she said to me, "It was as if somebody had thrown a lasso. It came through here, exactly. and you know, pulling, and you were pulling it." I was flabbergasted. All I wanted to know why she was commenting. She was commenting in the in the seminar something yeah. that I thought was interesting. So I wanted to talk to her. But can you imagine? She felt that I was throwing a lasso and pulling it, just by the mind, but just by the thoughts. And we all have that power. Especially now, because you say the the power of intention or the power of thought. Uh, due to, you can say, the vibration is, is rising on planet Earth or Mother Earth is, is uh, gaining uh, cosmic consciousness, you can say. So we are climbing up, you can say, and that means the power becomes more uh, fast, you can say. Everything is moving faster. Uh, evolution, it's not time that's speeding up, it's evolution, it's creation. Because we are reaching the, the time period where we will come seriously co-creators. And this is what the power elite, they don't want us to come and that's why we have all the wars. We have the theater wars, you can say, in the real so-called reality, and then we have all the invisible wars on the mind and, and the psyche and the heart and whatever we are being fought with. But I have experienced during the last six months that actually since September 2009, things have started to become really fast. And, you know, it's amazing how fast things manifest. And it's, it's really sometimes it's scary because I just thought about this yesterday and now someone contacts you on the computer or calls you and this opportunity or whatever 
is being attracted into the field so actually we are creating so fast now and and therefore it's so important that we focus on exactly peace 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 and love and and unity as we say what uh, you know the yeah. because yeah be, because we can really we have so much power but people are not aware about the power they have so yeah that's right and how do we wake them up i mean maybe our talk can make somebody react and think and we can send the love vibrations generally too to the planet first of course and, and then to some nations then especially to the elite who is waging war and individuals mm. and it does have an effect absolutely i've had so many incidences quote, quote that that prove to me that that the power of the mind is the biggest power you can have. It's bigger than all the bombs, it's bigger than the electromagnetic fields when you know about them exactly. and you know, use it against them. But if you don't know, you're just a victim. We saw today, you know, we have these two uh, great uh, experiences, you can say. Uh, we bought the roses and you gave the woman in the post office a roses because she gave you an envelope. And she was like, you know, her whole day changed immediately and she was waving to us when we went out right. of the shop and, and the other woman as well, you know, two hearts were just like, boom, and you know, the roses, they don't cost really anything. No. It, it takes so little and, and, and people say, oh, but it takes so little. You know, I, I, I enjoy doing great things like, you know, buying some books that has been the last stock but a funny book yeah. and then wrap them up in paper, go to the street and ask people, can I ask you two questions? And they say, oh, this sounds religious. I say, no, no, can I ask you two questions? Are you good at receiving a gift? And I said, no, no. Then I said, then you can learn. And you know, you get the reaction <laughs> immediately and it's just fun, you know, and people say, how did you, why did you spend, let's say 200 euros yeah. on that? But you know, the, the energy and the experience you get from that is, 10,000 euros because it's so you you create so much energy out of nothing out of thin air that's right and that's we have free energy and the free yeah. energy is our enthusiasm and yeah yeah when you just do a little tiny thing to 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 somebody who is not known to you even for just to make the, the day happy or whatever that energy spreads it's like you give it and it spreads but it's very difficult for many people at, at, to take a, uh, take gifts you know mostly say no 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 I don't know you or whatever even if it is I want to thank you for what you did for me but still it's you know I didn't do it for money I didn't do it for this you know it's hard to take it's easier to give than to take and yeah. we all have to learn both yeah and when, when we when we say it's easier to give than to take you know to give is is often Normally, women are better at receiving oh, yeah. than men. Except we say, oh, you give a comment, uh, you have yeah. a nice dress on, yeah. oh, this is 20 years old. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. That is because you're sort of yeah, yeah. shy about it, so you don't know what yeah. to say. In America, they can do that. I, I learned that when I was a student there. They can, they, somebody gives you a compliment, they say, thank you. And that's yeah. exactly what we should do. Yeah. But in Northern Europe, it's, you know, no, 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 this is, you know, it was... Yeah, they say, what, what is he up to? What is he up to? Exactly, yeah, yeah. or something. And, and, you know, this is old and this, you know, you sort of diminish yourself. Yeah. For nothing. Yeah. So, thank you for compliments. Yeah, it's very, it's very nice having you here. <laughs> and actually, you look, you look, you know, today something is happening with you. It's like you are... Energy has yeah, changed. Yeah, energy has changed. Yeah, it's great. And mine too, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, all this, the war, fear to stuff going on in the world, with yeah, wars going on so many places now and impeding f people fighting each other and so. The male energy, the power energy, pushing, pushing, pushing. And it's actually doing a lot of harm to the, you can say, the heart chakra in people and of course in women because women take care of children and give birth to children and who, who wants their child to be sent into war, Nobody. to fight a war? Nobody. But it, it seems like all this war stuff is going on again like we have talked so many times before about to lock us in the physical realm. It's, it's the attack all the time so that we will not climb up it's we should be in the fear state all the time fear is the great control factor of course but yeah that's true but on the other hand when you look at history there has been always wars as long as humankind has been on this planet there's yeah. been wars so when you think of a possibility 
and that of course is, is a goal, that there would be universal please, peace on this planet. No wars, no killing of other people because of their religion, because of their skin color, mm. because of their opinions, because of whatever reason. Now that is a great goal, but are we going to get it someday and when? We are moving now. We are in a, we are in a kind of dualistic period now. In when we are according to the Mayan calendar, it's it's also it's you, you don't have to know know all about the Mayan calendar, but it's just about what kind of period are we in. We are in a period now that's dualistic, but the the underlying theme is ethics. So actually, it's all about we have to confront ourselves and say, hey, what are we doing that is bad ethics? But we are entering into a you can say a, a unity period from. November this year, 2010, and that means actually we 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 should start now mirroring ourselves and say, hey, what is this behavior doing? Am I creating more conflict, more debate, more discussions now, or am I contributing to uplifting, to sharing, to to caring, to give love, make love in this world? Because peace has to do with love, of course. But the power elite doesn't like love; they like control. Yeah, and if you think of the Mayan calendar, there's a lot of articles about it today and, and in the future too. It has also created fear to people because many have, in my mind, disinterpreted it, yeah. thinking that that is the end. Yeah. You know, that's it, finished. A new beginning. There's exactly, and there is no end. The Mayan calendar never says that that would be, you know, the end no. of the world or whatever. No. It's going to maybe be the end of this kind of negative thinking and a new kind of thinking, a new kind of world mm -hmm. could emerge, yeah. a new kind of consciousness. Exactly. And that is the big change. So we should look forward to it instead of, you know, being afraid or, or living in fear and yeah. what are we going to do? No, just live in the now and send good energies. And exactly, that's, that's a very good point because the 2012 But it's also because many people they're just they're sitting and waiting, you know, watching uh, watching the TV and <laughs> eating more cookies and waiting for the days to come. But they haven't realized, or many haven't realized, many have, but many ha have not, that they are co-creators. That whatever they experience, they are part of in a sense. Um, so, but you know, we have to. Uh, yeah, it's it's really about you. You know, when if you are going to run a marathon. You have to practice a little. You have to go for some runs here and there. You know, I tried once without training, and I suffered a year afterwards with a, a hanging arm, and, and so. But we have to start training. You know, we can train like we have done today with the roses, or we can just start. You know, ask ourselves what it is that we really want to experience, because as you know, what you do to others, you do to yourself. Mm -hmm. So when we kill others, when we go to war, and of course the soldiers are just uh, many mind control and obey orders and so, but if we kill, for instance, all these wars going on here, when we kill other people, we kill ourselves. So actually right. we are killing a part of our heart, so actually all people who know military people or soldiers or whatever, we should start not being afraid of, of talking to each other and say, hey, could this be another way? Could we flip this whole world in another direction. Well, actually, statistics seem to show that in America more soldiers are committing suicide than now dying in their wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Hmm. That shows something, because if more soldiers are committing suicide, it means that their heart is broken. Something has happened. Hmm. And they can see that this is meaningless. This is just for the power elite. This is just to get drug money and, 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 and the bad things. And young people, young soldiers, males and females, are usually idealistic and they hmm. want to, you know, we fight for our country. And then they go there and they see that they just have to kill children and civilians. And, and for what? Yeah. They can't take it. No. And that should, I think, be more publicized. Yeah. Because that would shake up people that, you know, they can't, the soldiers can't take this. They're good people at yeah. heart. And they rather commit suicide yeah. than continue killing civilians and innocent people, whom the elite calls terrorists. Yeah. Um, I recall that the Times magazine uh, a few years ago made a gallop asking what is the, the greatest uh, uh, danger, what country. Is, is, is the most dangerous in the world. 
and almost 80% of the Gallup said USA. They didn't say it was Afghanistan or Iraq or, you know, Al-Qaeda or something, yeah. which is just, uh, you know, they have just uh, invented that name. They have to have something yeah. for the enemy name. Yeah. I heard that it was something to do with CIA database base or something, this yeah. name. Yeah. But uh, the major thing is that you have an enemy. And uh, how do you deal with an enemy? You don't need to go no. with guns. You can deal with totally diplomatic yeah. relations, yeah. but of course, that is peace. Yeah. And it was shocking to me to find out, and it wasn't many, many years ago that I found out because I, I was always wondering why do the secret services harass peace uh, uh, movements? Mm. I thought, isn't it good for people that there's mm. peace? You know, they, they have peace uh, yeah. uh, demonstrations with all kinds of uh, yeah. sayings there, make love not war, whatever, yeah. and they're always filmed every one of them by the secret yeah, services still, and then they yeah, yeah and then they harass these people yeah why i couldn't understand now i know because yeah. the elite wants war yeah. wants confrontation wants people killed wants to have the power and the control and all yeah. the people of every single country whether it's afghanistan or whether it's it's norway or denmark or yeah. usa the man on the street the woman on the street do, does not want war but no, that's exactly. But it's looked like you know. I have wondered many years because how come they they don't do anything and so and then of course I see it's they are part of a grid. You can say the power control elite and so they are working in a kind of dimension that's a kind of frequency or energy and they are locked that's into right. this. That's right. And what they are trying to do is actually they are trying to block our minds totally so we will not have the spirit connection. So we will not have the spirit uh, connection to the divine. And I see it as three steps. You can say we have the third dimension or uh, this reality, and that's where the power elite are trying to, to, to hold on. And then we have the fourth dimension. And I say the fourth dimension is actually the mind to have the clear connection to open up so it will bzzz, uh, and you know we can transform both ways our experiences up to the field of consciousness and we can uh, draw from that consciousness into new experiences. And then we have the fifth dimension which is of course of the love and if uh, I don't know if you have watched it or people have watched the movie called The Fifth Element I have um, no. otherwise we can watch this afterwards it's so expressing you know the love the power of love actually what happens when the power of love is being ignited and it's yeah like you have talked a lot about the light but it's like when when love is really is really ignited you know it's like you you the light shines through you you become so much more yeah yeah, because then you emit the love frequency. I know I have a good friend in, in Norway, and she says sometimes that when I get really angry, she says, I can't be in this room because your energy is so strong that it makes me physically sick. Yeah. And I said, I'm not angry at you. I'm angry at these elites who want to destroy us. But still, she was in the same room, and, and I did not know until she pointed it out yeah. that it goes straight yeah. out, and whoever happens to be there, gets hit yeah and we don't think that when we get mad at something you know yeah. we don't think that whoosh, i emanate a negative energy and it hits people around me it has an effect and and then if i'm in harmony and and loving yeah. uh, you know attitude yeah. like uh, today i had uh, healing with the tibetan balls yeah it was incredible because uh, because i had never experienced that a tibetan ball you know, it, it gives a sound, of course, and there are different sizes and different sounds. But I got a little demonstration. Uh, the, the healer put uh, water into the ball and then hit it. And it started jumping. The water droplets started jumping mm -hmm. into the air. Yeah. And then I put my, my finger into it and I could feel the energy. Yeah. I mean, it was incredible. So. Like how, how much water have we got in the exactly, body? Exactly, we have more water than, than, than anything else. Yeah. We are water bodies and people don't know it. You know, again I say 87% yeah. of brain yeah. is water and at least 70% of our body is water. Yeah. So we are water body. Think what that energy does to, to our water body. And what our thoughts do to the water. Exactly. So it was, it was a tremendously fine demonstration. 
you could see it with your own eyes and feel it, you know, yeah. like the finger went like this. That's also why it's very important to drink, you know, structured water or vitalized water because much of the water that comes out of our taps today are almost oh. dead water. And imagine what will happen with dead water in the body combined with all the attacks from the media, from politicians, from the world, what is going on, all the chaos. You know, it, 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 people are vibrating in a, a, a yeah. difficult way and it's, it's just so important, you can say. It's, uh, yeah. yeah. Water is extremely important and of course, again, when you read so-called military exercises, uh, they can use water as a weapon. Yeah. You know, they can, yeah. they can put bacteria, they yeah. can put uh, viruses, they can yeah. put any kinds of chemicals and yeah. people get sick. And uh, they do that in Western countries anyway. Yeah. I do know that. Yeah. And people don't know it. And I think that's very cruel. Yeah. That's very mean. Yeah. But again, the military says we have to exercise. We have a weapon. We have to use it. We have yeah. to exercise it. So why do we have all these weapons? Yeah. To harm yeah. other human beings yeah. deliberately. Yeah. And the worst is now, because there seems to be, in the Western countries at least, a war against your own nation. Yeah. I mean, you can't go from Denmark uh, against Russia, I mean, officially at least you can't, or Finland can't go against Sweden, but each country can go against their own people. And that's when they, you know, contaminate yeah. the water, that's when they use electromagnetic fields, that's when they use the beaming I, I think to that, their own yeah. people. I think that's very important because you talked before about an enemy. And, and here we have, uh, you know, an enemy, when it's a defined enemy, then you can do something about it. But the worst enemy is, like you say, is actually the old governments, you can say, of the That's countries. Right. Yeah. Because also, if you look at the word government uh, and, and sp uh, split it apart, it says government. It means to govern the mental. It actually means mind control, and this is what is going on. But the enemy is really, when we look at the wireless society, we look at mobile towers all over the country. You cannot hardly go anywhere be, uh, without yeah. being beamed. And then they, they push forward mobile phones for old people and little children yeah. five years old. Older, elderly people now should have one, only with one button up, because then they can call their grandchild. So they are taking two segments of the, uh, the consumers that normally don't use a mobile phone and they connect them because the little boy wants to talk to granddad. You know, it's, it's like a rape of humanity in this way and people, if they realize that the enemy is not Sweden, Norway or, or hey. South Africa, it's the mobile towers and for instance HARP, but all these wireless gadgets, we have, how come, you know, life was working finally when we did not have all these, right. and today we need all to be in contact with each other all the time, but often we forget the inner contact, the inner energy, so we can use our f thought power and telepathy. We, we don't need a mobile phone, because when we develop our telepathy, we can do it all. Yeah, but majority of today's Western world people cannot. Yeah, I know. I mean, first of all, they don't know that they have <laughs> no. this. But the future seems to be that you don't even have televisions. You can see it in your mind, all the programs. Yeah. And of course, that takes, I'm sure, at least 100 years or more. I don't know. Because in the last 200 years, we have evolved more than in thousands of years. In the last 20 years. Yeah, right, yeah. also. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, 200 yeah. years, so think how it was yeah. and, and what it is now. Yeah. But then we don't need them. Then we can just send messages and we can talk to each other. We can look at the TV yeah, yeah. programs. So actually the future scenario is quite exciting when you take it positively and yeah. when it's used positively yes. instead of negatively like, yeah. uh, like today. But um, it, it will change, you know. It, it, that's also what is very important because all the fear going on. If, if, if normally also people have a lot of fear in general because if they don't have the bigger picture, if they don't have anything to, to, to hang on to, anything to understand what is going on and what is going on in the cosmos and anything, then it's difficult to, because you are down in the labyrinth, labyrinth you can say, mm -hmm. but you need a ladder, you can step up and say, oh, oh, this is what they're doing, okay, now they're going that direction, okay, because it's much easier if also to realize that this is not a one-time experience here. So, um, 
you know, but people, they will probably have many lives that will look like each other if they sit in the sofa life after life. So it's much easier now to get started. And even though, if what should I do? Start loving more, start caring more and do it for yourself. Start with yourself because the more love you can give to yourself, the more love you can give to other people. That's true. We always come back to the same theme. Yeah. Love and light and yeah. unity. Yeah, we do. And... Yeah, if we, if we wish to experience peace in the outer world, we have to have peace in ourselves. And can we have peace in ourselves today if we fill ourselves with what comes from the media, if we read the papers, if we listen to a lot of junk and watch the television and use all the wireless gadgets and eat food which is not any vital energy in anymore? Is that possible or will we have to face our whole lifestyle what are we really doing? Because we need to have peace and we saw the water, what happened in the singing bowl. Right. So it, it doesn't come from the outside. The outside is just a mirror of what is going on inside in each of us. You are the world, I am the world, and when I change, I change the world, and you change the world when you change. Yeah, it all starts within. We have to start with our own heart. We can't tell somebody else that you have to change. That doesn't work. No, no. I have to change and with my change maybe the other one changes too to the positive because I emanate then positive energy instead of the hate energy, instead of anger energy, instead of the negativity. So it's all in within us. So actually we have, we have talked a lot about, you know, you said something about forgiveness, you know, you ooh, forgive, you know, and all that's the, I, my yeah. hardest lesson in yeah. life. I know yeah, yeah. I may flunk, but I hope <laughs> I don't after all these yeah. experiences here in Denmark. Yeah. But it has to start, we have to forgive ourselves as well. Because, oh, yeah. because we are part of the whole, we are all one, and we are all part of the same. So if we forgive ourselves, we actually forgive others as well. But if it starts with ourselves, and then life really starts to become a, a, a sort of miracle, you know, because what can happen where we are now, what, what, what is there to fear here? <clears throat> yeah, perhaps that... Uh, I don't come to bed tonight because I have to edit videos. But you know that that uh, that's okay. But there isn't really anything to fear, you know, because in the now there's nothing to fear here. No, and one thing is that I I do believe we have all chosen our destiny, on the long run, and things that happen are supposed to teach us a lot of things. And when we don't learn the normal good way, we learn the hard way but we're going to learn. Or then we flunk the class and we take it again in the next reincarnation. So actually there's nothing to fear. No. Either I make it or I don't, but still I'm going to make it someday, somewhere, on some other planet, if not on this one. I, so I, life I, is eternal, we are fine. Exactly. And I normally say to people, you know, just, uh, we are standing here and I say, oh, take just Oh, just one ah, little step, you know. Oh, no, it, it gets hot here, uh, and um, that's it. And but when you take the step, you know, I've been in the situation. We all have. We know we had to take the first step sometime in our lives. And afterwards, when I found out, I just stepped out of the comfort zone, and then I found out, wow, what a freedom, what a freedom, what a relief from all this system going on, all this things trying to to lock you into something but when you take your or you become your integrity you become whole inside you become who you truly are and follow your heart follow your bliss and and always use actually the fear as an indicator right way wrong way and take the energy back to where you are in the center you know then so many things can happen and Life is really a miracle. I have, you know, I have this spirit guide, of course, um, and as he told me, is that uh, your mission is not uh, ending with this life, so you don't have to stress. Just do whatever you can, and and keep on going, you know. And and this, it's also a relief because what are we striving for when life is eternal? That's right. We should all remember we cannot die. There is no death and we are all someday going to the universal love completely. Thank you. You too.